Returning to her town for Thanksgiving, a woman finds a letter from a secret admirer from high school. Little does she know that letter will bring her to her soulmate. In the opening scene, we see the protagonist, Nikki Beaton, holding a presentation at her firm. After presenting it successfully, she gets to chat with her boss, who seems to love her new proposal. After work she gets home and decides to call her best friend who's back in their hometown. Nikki is visiting for the holidays, so she and Simone go over their plans for that day. Hanging up the call, she tries to cook dinner for her son but he tells her that he'll be grabbing pizza with a friend. Although bummed out, she understands that he's in his teenage years. Her fiancé comes by, but duty calls so he leaves as well. Sighing to herself, she makes it known that she hates the kitchen. The boys stay for dinner the following evening, as it's Thanksgiving, but it seems like they're hiding something from her. In the morning, we see Nikki arriving at her parents' house, and in the evening, we see them enjoying a Thanksgiving dinner. Nikki expresses her gratitude for everything in life, and so do her parents before they feast on her. Throughout the dinner, they make small talk, and her parents reveal that they're selling the house. Nikki goes silent for a while, but surprisingly supports their idea. She's not sad about the house, as the money would be a great opportunity for them to travel. But since it'll be their last Christmas together, her parents ask her to stay so they can celebrate together. She doesn't seem to want to at first, but she ends up agreeing. After dinner, they sit in the living room and go through Nikki's old stuff. She pulls out a frame from the box only to reveal that it's her valedictorian speech framed. Putting it to the side, she tries forgetting about it, but her mother assures her that it wasn't as bad as she thinks it was. Going through her old books, she suddenly comes across a letter hidden in one of them. Confused, she opens it up only to realize that someone had written her a heartfelt letter, telling her how much they appreciate her. Nikki's eyes fill with tears as she realizes that she was appreciated by someone in school, and she starts crying because she'll never know who wrote it, as it's not signed by anyone. Her mother tries to make her feel better by reminding her that she can find out who wrote it while she's back, but Nikki seems to be hopeless. The following morning she goes to her best friend's shop to tell her all about the card, but it seems like she's not the only one with the surprises. Simone's getting married and she's already asked Nikki to be her maid of honor. However, she also asks her to prepare a speech. Nikki is surprised, but she promises to do so, as she wants her to have the best day. Nikki pulls out the car, so they have a look at it together. However, they don't talk about it much as Simone's fiancé Jeremy walks in. Excited to have her bestie back, Simone suggests they have dinner all together, but Jeremy lets her know that he's going to be with her son. Shortly, he leaves and Nikki notices that she's upset. Simone opens up, letting her know that she feels left out as she doesn't see her son as much, and neither does she spend time with Jeremy. Nikki feels for her, and it's good that she's back. Simone has no reason to be upset, but she doesn't know that yet. We see Jeremy and her son Anthony getting the papers to her dream house, which is the reason they've been so absent. Getting the keys from Derek, they walk in and are blown away by how fitting the house is for Simone. Jeremy agrees to take it, but he asks Derek not to make the purchase public until he tells him. Derek agrees, so they decide to explore the rest of the house. The girls decide to take a trip down memory lane as they go through Simone's old box of decorations. Among them, they find an ornament she and Anthony's father made, so Nikki wonders what their relationship is like. Simone claims that they're doing well, but when Jeremy proposes to her, Anthony asks whether he is going to leave like his father. Panicked, Simone had told him that Jeremy was here to stay, which is essentially a good answer. Switching the topic, Simone wonders how Nikki will find the guy from the envelope, but it seems like Nikki is lost. She doesn't even know where to start, so Simone suggests they go by the card. They know that he played a sport of some sort because she had congratulated him, but wonder what sport it may be. Next they go by the poem, and Simone suggests she searches to see where it's from. The poem ends up being from Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare, and it warms Nikki's heart. The whole thing is exciting, and Simone reminds her that she has a whole month to find him. Nikki becomes sad all of a sudden, and it confuses Simone. She admits to being afraid that he won't remember writing it if she were to find him, but Simone assures her that no one would quote Shakespeare if they weren't in love. The besties finally decide to separate, but not before Simone shows her the house of her dreams. Nikki doesn't seem to be impressed, but Simone continues to gush over the house she doesn't even plan on buying. Of course, she's completely unaware that her soon-to-be husband has already bought it. She drops Nikki off after the tour, but as Nikki walks up to the door, she sees a real estate sign by Derek. Walking in, she gets rushed by him who demands the decorations immediately as the potential buyers will arrive in 10 minutes. He moves things around, adding and taking, but what surprises her is when he takes their family photo off the wall and still doesn't realize that she's the owner's daughter. 
he puts a picture of a snowy house in the middle of the woods and proceeds to describe it with the best compliments. He still doesn't realize who she is, so she asks him to describe the picture more. He finally picks up what she's trying to say, just in time for her parents' return. The potential buyer comes shortly, so the family waits in the dining room to hear how it went. Derek returns excitedly and assures them that the deal is done. Not only that, he offers to search for some apartments for them and even invites Nikki. Confused, she asks where he knows her name from, so he tells her about the countless diplomas in her room. Embarrassed, she promises to take them off for the next buyer. Before going to bed, Nikki decides to go through her old boxes. She finds an old-school spots catalog, so she searches in hopes of finding Mr. Card. Things may be going great for the Beatons, but the same can't be said about the Coles. While sitting cozy in the living room, Simone asks her boy what the following weekend is. Anthony gets excited as he remembers the game, but Simone informs him that's not it. No one seems to remember, so she reminds them that it's their traditional picture day. Anthony doesn't seem excited and he tries to convince his mother otherwise, but she doesn't want to break tradition. He gives Jeremy a pleading look, so Jeremy suggests he take a picture of them in front of the Christmas tree at home. The boys unite and end up winning the argument which only makes Simone feel worse. She heads to the kitchen, so Jeremy goes after her and apologizes for not being by her side. Simone opens up, reminding him that she only has three years left before he goes to college and becomes a man. She knows that he's grown, but doesn't plan on changing anything since it'll be gone in a few years. The following morning, Simone and Nikki head to the local bazaar. Nikki tells her all about her investigation task the previous night, and Simone seems to be excited. Soon, they walk by their old classmate's exhibition, and given that there's a chance he could have written the card, Simone makes her go to it. Dragging Nikki in, she gives her all the confidence before Nikki gets close to Reggie. They start talking about his art, but Nikki struggles to find a topic they may connect on. Seeing how badly this is going, Simone distracts Reggie for a bit with another customer, while she gives Nikki the reassuring speech. Nikki gives it another shot however, this time she holds a conversation with him like a normal person. They start talking about high school, and he finally recognizes her. He remembers that he knows her because they had chemistry. Embarrassingly, Nikki assumes that he's talking about chemistry between them, but he mentions how mean the teacher had been. Slowly losing hope, Nikki asks whether he used to play sports, and he reveals that he used to play basketball for the school. Unfortunately, he hurt his leg, which prevented him from participating in the championship. Nikki sighs as she knows that Reggie is not her man. After the fun little experiment, Simone heads back home. She arrives with bags full of goodies and even sees her son playing with the snow in the front. He asks whether he can go to a friend's in the evening, but wanting to have him by her side, she suggests he invite the friend over and promises to cook his favorite pasta. Anthony informs her that he has to go to his friend's because he's babysitting his sister. Having no choice, Simone lets him go out once again. On the other side, we see Nikki returning with two big bags. She lets her parents know that Reggie isn't a match, but she's still positive that she'll find the right guy. After doing a little swooping on her own, her mother lets her know that the writer must be left-handed by the way he writes his T's. Intrigued, Nikki looks at the writing on the card and realizes that she's right. Derek arrives at their house, but when he sees Nikki, his excitement drops. Nikki's parents let her know that they're looking at a house, so she scoots next to them to see it. Quickly, she realizes that they're looking at Jeremy's house, so she becomes suspicious but Derek doesn't say anything. Speaking of Jeremy's house, we see him and Simone talking about their plans as Nikki runs after Derek to find out why Jeremy's selling the house. He's about to tell her some exciting news, but the same can't be said for Simone. Jeremy lets her know that his mother is coming over and she couldn't be less excited. His mother is rather difficult and doesn't seem to like Simone, which is why she doesn't want to meet him. However, Jeremy is positive that all will go well only if she pretends like she needs to. Whether it's cooking or something around the house, he advises her to pretend like she doesn't know how to do it, so there will be a chance for them to bond over something. Although hesitant, Simone agrees only because she loves him. Back at the Beaton's house, Nikki promises not to tell Simone if Derek tells her why Jeremy's selling the house. Knowing that she won't drop it, he decides to take her to the house. Nikki jumps for joy as Derek pulls into the driveway of Simone's dream house. She couldn't be happier for her best friend but as she's cheering on, they hear a thud in the house. Trying not to panic, Derek calls Jeremy to ask whether he's in the house but Jeremy happens to be home. They decide to go in, while Jeremy makes up a lame excuse to get out of the house. Walking in slowly, they hear some movement, but as they get closer to it, they see that it's Anthony, trying to set up a Christmas tree bigger than him. They help him out before the tree falls over him. He admits to not telling anyone that he's there, and he doesn't seem to like the idea that Nikki knows. 
She promises not to say a word, and looking around she realizes that they have barely any decorations, but luckily, Derek knows just the spot. He takes them to a decoration shop that has both new and vintage decorations. For some odd reason, he happens to know everything about them, including the years when they were made. It intrigues Nikki, so she asks how he knows everything about the decorations. He opens up, revealing that his ex-wife is an interior designer, and although he had learned a lot from her, things didn't work out for them. They get to a coffee stand, so he orders two cups for them. He asks about her romantic life, and she tells him that she's focusing on herself for the right one. Derek assumes that she's just afraid of rejection without having any ill intent, but she ends up getting offended by his comment. Rightfully so, she goes to Simone's to rant. Surprisingly, Simone ends up agreeing with Derek's opinion because she knows Nikki tends to run away when things start to get complicated. Nikki gets offended, letting her know that's not true. To change her mind, Simone invites her to a party with her and Jeremy. The catch? It's hosted by one of the mean girls of their time. Nikki does contemplate going. But in the end, she agrees only because it would be a great chance for her to find the one who sent her the card. At the party, she wastes no time after getting her drink. She and Simone scan the room and find one of their old classmates standing by himself. Simone gives her the green light, so Nikki prepares to dance. Walking up to him, he recognizes her and almost immediately mentions her speech. Unfortunately for Nikki, the host arrives to greet them, and she talks about the speech as well. She starts to laugh at the thought of her speech, and even claims that everyone had laughed back then. Nikki's heart drops as she starts feeling like she's back in high school, but the guy comes to her defense, claiming that the speech was amazing. Luckily, the mean girl leaves so Nikki wastes no time in finding out if he's the one. However, before she can ask, the guy's fiancé joins them and introduces himself. Regardless, Nikki lets him know about the card, in hopes of him recognizing the handwriting, but he doesn't have a clue as to who it might be. Defeated yet again, Nikki returns to Simone. As if things couldn't get worse, Nikki gets stuck with Derek as Jeremy and Simone go to greet some friends. Being the true gentleman he is, Derek apologizes for his comment, but Nikki assures him that he has been right. They bury the hatches, and given that the party is quite boring, he suggests they get out of there and go somewhere to eat. Agreeing with him, she says yes instantly, so they go to a Mexican restaurant. As they get there, Derek can't help but ask about her valedictorian speech, because he happened to hear about it at the party. Nikki decides to tell Jim all about it, so they can laugh at her expense. They end up almost crying as she explains that she had sung her speech in hopes of getting her classmates to like her. Derek rates her embarrassment a 9.5 out of 10, but he promises that he has a 10 out of 10 embarrassing story. In school, he had an important debate, so much so, that he stayed up all night practicing. Naturally, he had fallen asleep while in class, but what's embarrassing is that he had dreamed about his mother, and he ended up telling her that he loves her. The whole auditorium had heard it and everyone laughed at him. Nikki can't help but laugh as well, feeling a little bit sorry for him. Derek raises a toast to their embarrassments, hoping that they'll never happen again. The day of meeting her soon-to-be mother-in-law finally comes, so we see Simone cleaning the house and making sure everything is perfect. Poor Anthony tries to get a cookie, but Samin doesn't let him as Jeremy's mother is a very neat woman. Miriam finally arrives and it looks like she's not that excited that she's there. After making her first snarky comment, she walks in ready to have dinner. Given that it's quiet at the table, Jeremy breaks the ice by complimenting the meal. Miriam agrees and surprisingly doesn't say anything bad. Wanting them to get closer, Jeremy asks Simone to take Miriam shopping on Sunday, since she has forgotten her gifts for them. Simone tries getting out of it and even Miriam backs her up, but she ends up agreeing as she doesn't have any other choice. Soon we see them at the fair, and it looks like Simone can't wait for their trip to be over. Miriam goes from stand to stand, trying to find the perfect gift, when she thinks it's time for them to take a seat. They order some chocolate and cinnamon rolls, and take a seat. Tasting the sweet treat only reminds Miriam of her and Jeremy's tradition. On the morning of Christmas, they would wake up early and make cinnamon rolls for the whole neighborhood, a great bonding experience and one she misses a lot. Simone relates to her story, as she reveals that she used to make cookies with Anthony every year. Miriam understands her, but she also understands Anthony, which is why she advises Simone to let him have his space. Although she doesn't say anything, she tells Nikki all about it. She feels misunderstood and not seen since Anthony only spends time with Jeremy. Surprisingly, Nikki agrees with Miriam that he needs to let Anthony have his space, but she also thinks that she would let him and Jeremy create a bond. Simone gets hurt by her words, as she's the last person she expected not to understand her. Nikki tries to convince her that she understands, but Simone won't see the real problem. She storms off, and Nikki lets her calm down. 
The following morning, she stops by the new house to drip off some of her old ornaments. Derek wastes no time in sharing the good news that her parents have been accepted to purchase a house. She can't wait any longer to tell them, so they run to the house to share the great news. Anthony and Jeremy continue with the work, but are surprised by Miriam's visit. Although it's great what they're doing for Simone, she reminds them that they've been too absent which has made Simone feel lonely. Jeremy realizes that she's right, so he plans on bringing her to the house on Christmas Eve, with everyone she loves there. It's been a long time since Nikki went to a Christmas concert, and Derek is the one to take her to it. The little girl performs a Christmas carol on stage, and Nikki can't take how cute she is. After the concert they head out when something falls off of Nikki's purse. Derek picks it up only to realize that it's an old Christmas card. Nikki tells him a little bit about it, but he seems to be stunned. Luckily his phone rings so he snaps out of it and goes out to answer. It seems like Miriam's advice had made Anthony realize that he doesn't spend much time with his mother. So while she and Miriam are making cookies, he goes to the kitchen to ask Simone to spend some time together. Surprisingly, she lets him know that they're busy with the cookies, but Miriam is not about to lose the chance. She assures Simone that she's fine and asks her to go. Simone hugs her son as a feeling of relief washes over her body. Finally, things are back to normal. Just a few days before Christmas, Nikki decides to bring presents for the whole family. Before she gets in, Simone assures her that she's not mad, and even admits that Nikki had been right. Walking in, she gets greeted by Miriam, and they meet for the first time. After some casual talk, Simone asks Nikki how the investigation's going, and Nikki admits that she still hasn't found the one yet. Miriam gets curious, so she asks to see the card herself. Surprisingly, her face drops as she sees the handwriting. She tries to change the topic, but they insist she tells them what she knows. Miriam lets them know that the handwriting is Jeremy's, but they can't seem to believe her. It is not until she points out some specifics that they believe her. However, it still doesn't make it better, because it means that Jeremy was in love with Simone's best friend when they were kids, making the whole situation weird. Nikki asks them to calm down, and to seek answers from Jeremy. Right as she says that, Jeremy happens to be walking in, so she asks whether he had written the card. He's pleasantly surprised, and admits that he's written it. Soon he realizes what it looks like, so he assures them he had written it since his friend had bad handwriting. Getting her hopes up, Nikki asks his friend, but Jeremy refuses to tell them, as he has promised his friend not to. Simone assures her that she'll get the answer, but even when she tries, Jeremy doesn't budge. He thinks that Nikki should stop living in the past and focus on the future, which seems to have Derek in it. Simone likes the idea, so she promises to talk to Nikki since she always needs a little nudge, but Jeremy thinks that she should let her do her thing. Realizing that he's right, Simone agrees, and switches the topic to Miriam. She thinks that Jeremy's not spending enough time with her, but Jeremy tries to find excuses instead of owning up to it. He eventually realizes that she's right, so he promises to make it up to his mother. Simone texts Nikki that she can't get the answers, but Nikki seems to be fine with that. Finally, it is the morning of Christmas Eve and Simone is up and ready to prepare all of the breakfast Anthony wants. Although he's confused at first, he ends up loving the idea of having both waffles and eggs for breakfast. At the new house, we see Derek and Nikki preparing for the party before Jeremy comes to bring them some more groceries. Before he has a chance to leave, he apologizes to Nikki for not telling her who her secret admirer is, but she understands completely. Jeremy leaves and Derek becomes curious. Nikki tells him everything and admits to finding it 20 years later, but what's different is that she doesn't seem to care about who wrote it anymore. She now thinks that high school hasn't been so bad, and she plans on believing that. Weirdly enough, Derek seems to be way too curious about the situation, but Nikki doesn't realize that. Jeremy spends some time with their mother preparing for the grand surprise, and he seems to have missed being by her side. Quickly they pack up everything and we see them in the evening, ready for their reservation. Before they leave, Simone asks whether they can pass by her favorite house, and Jeremy agrees. Little does she know that house is already hers. They get to it, but instead of driving by, Jeremy pulls into the driveway. His excuse is that they're going to tell the owners how cute their lights are, but Simone doesn't think that it's a good idea. As they get to the living room, everyone yells surprise, and Simone can't believe it. Jeremy lets her know that he has bought the house she loves because she's the love of his life, and he wants to spend their time together in that exact house. Simone thanks him and tells him that she loves him, before kissing him passionately. While she runs to the other rooms to see how everything looks, everyone gets to partying, marking their new beginning. Simone asks Nikki to take a picture with her next to the Christmas tree, just like they used to in the old days. Next we see Nikki outside enjoying the snow when Derek joins her. 
He asks whether she's wishing upon a star jokingly, and she admits that she's not, as she needs to learn to be grateful for what she has and enjoy life as it is. He suggests she enjoys it with someone, and she doesn't deny the idea if it's the right person. Wondering what would make him the right person, he pulls out a Christmas card for her. It makes her laugh, but as she opens it, she sees that he hasn't written anything. Finally, Derek reveals that he had written the Christmas card 20 years ago, and it brings tears to her face. However, she wondered why he didn't say anything after she dropped her card at church. He admits to not having the courage, and from inside we see that Jeremy had given him the nudge. 20 years ago, he wouldn't have had the courage to tell her, but now he asks her for a second chance. She lets him know that she's glad it's him, so he kisses her passionately, marking the beginning of their long overdue love story.